Once again, welcome everybody to today's uh, webinar. And we are going to take a few moments to learn a bit more about the intellect, which is the most powerful element of our being. And we'll start by looking at what the published literature says about the intellect. So one definition is that it is the power or faculty of the mind by which one knows or understands as distinguished from that which one feels or that which one will, wills of that particular understanding. It's a little complicated, but if we simplify it, it is saying that it's the faculty of the mind which knows or understands things, knowledge, inputs, that are different from what we feel or what we will. Or we will. So they are, they are breaking down the difference between intellect and the emotions, basically. And this is the faculty of thinking and acquiring knowledge. So that's one definition. The second one is the capacity for thinking and acquiring knowledge, especially of a high complex order. So the high complex order is where those that use the intellect depart from those that don't. Third is a person possessing a great capacity of thought and knowledge. And finally, the one I like the most is that the intellect is a particular mind or intelligence, especially of a high order. So they're classifying it as a particular mind or a particular intelligence in itself of a higher order. So I feel that number four hits the bullseye. So my dear friends, from all my experiences, I have recognized a much broader and fluid definition of intellect, which I would like to share with you. I would describe intellect as the highest level of intelligence present in our being. Highest level of intelligence present in our being. This intelligence is of a much higher order than what is simply required to appreciate the material world. The intellect is the gateway between the human mind of limited intelligence and the soul or the higher self, which is of infinite intelligence. So our intellect is the level of our being where the finite meets the infinite, where the finite meets the infinite, like where the finite droplet meets the infinite ocean. That's the intellect. And according to this definition, we can visualize the intellect. So take a moment and just close your eyes. Take a moment, close your eyes, breathe freely for a few seconds, clear your mind, let go of all your emotions and tensions, and imagine that you are in a small, dimly lit room. So in a small room that is dimly lit, okay? This is your mind. Small, with a little bit of light, coming from a slightly open window. So look at the room, the dim light, and look at the window and see that little, little sliver of light coming through. So now you go and stand at this window and open it fully. It's now bringing in beautiful, powerful, brilliant light. And you now see the dim light of the room flowing into the vast, brilliant light of the universes. That is your intellect, where the finite meets the infinite. And you see the dim light of the finite droplet flowing into the vast light of the infinite. So that's how I would visualize intellect. You may open your eyes. Now, my dear friends, the dim light of your room comes from the intellect. The window is the gateway to this infinite light. So when you open it, you open the gateway. 
And we all have that gateway to the infinite light. If you follow the light from your room all the way into the bright light of the universe, you are in fact following your intellect. So practice this visualization frequently. You sit back, look at the room, look at the window, look at the dim light, open the window. And when you're standing at the window, you're actually standing at the gateway. You're standing at the point of your intellect. Open that window and watch the dim light flow into the infinite. And now you are at the exact spot where you can connect with your intellect. So the room, as I said, is your mind. And it is connected with every cell in your body. Hence your intellect permeates every element of your being because it is present in the intelligent life energy in every cell in your body. So our intellect is ever present with us throughout our being. So while I describe it as a gateway, you've got to think of this gateway that then spreads light and to an intelligence into through our life energy to our entire being. So it's there, it's everywhere. Just like water is present in our body, in all our fluids, the light of our intellect is present in every cell. This is the holistic interpretation of intellect from my experience. Now, this interpretation opens wonderful opportunities for us to access our intellect without any struggle at all, because it is ever present within us throughout our being. So why then do we find it so difficult to open ourselves to our intellect? And often this is a question many have asked. I believe it is because we live in a state that is totally immersed in our material mind. We are totally immersed in our material mind. Like that little room with the slightly open window through which just a little light peers in. And that's where we live, most of us. Therefore, as we did in the visualization, we have to consciously and frequently stand at that window and then open it as wide as we can. We have to open it as wide as we can and follow the light of our mind as it flows into the infinite light. That, my dear friends, is the first step to accessing our intellect. Now, what are the practical steps we can follow to achieve this? So step one we have covered, which is the visualization of your intellect. Step two is to be fully aware of the presence of your intellect as an integral part of your being. So the awareness is an important part and this awareness needs to be part of your consciousness. So every time we think of anything of importance, we should ask the question, what does my intellect say? Ask your intellect to guide you. So make the intellect your constant companion consciously. We don't do that now, but starting today, start doing that and you will see a quite a dramatic difference in your life. Remember, whenever you think of the intellect, you are actually flicking a light switch within yourself. You are awakening that connection between your intellect and the rest of your entire being. You are awakening a connection. And when this happens, you start to open that window as wide as it can go. And you begin to live at the gateway where the finite meets the infinite. This is the enlightened state of your being. This enlightened level of intelligence will begin to consciously reside in your mind, in your material mind, taking away your darkness and bringing light into your material consciousness. And this, as this happens, you will now begin to draw upon the highly intelligent thoughts that flow from your intellect to your material mind, making you a far more intelligent person than you've ever been. So you are like the person until now who walked in the darkness with a torch, and all you could see was what lay within the spots of light of the torch. Wherever the torch light uh, landed, that's all you could see. It was all very spotty. Now, once the intellect 
is accessed, then there is no darkness. There is no torch. You are the light itself. Your intellect level, then intelligence level raises to its peak when you access and become that light itself. So this is the second step towards accessing the intellect. Conscious awareness and engagement. Thirdly, we need to declutter our mental intelligence. Now, what do I mean by that? Each one of us has three core homes of intelligence in our being. Home number one is the mind, where all our thoughts are created, processed, and reasoned. And I'm referring to normal thoughts here, created, processed, and reasoned. This is our mental consciousness. Then there is home number two, which is the emotion center, where emotions are attached to our thoughts, which complete our experiences, both good and bad. So emotions, when attached to thoughts, complete the experience. So this is our emotion consciousness. And home number three is the soul, which is the center of our life energy and infinite intelligence. This is the spiritual consciousness or some call it the God consciousness. Thoughts we call inspirations are born here and then flow to the mental and emotional homes through the intellect. Now the intellect is present in all three homes, but like the window in the small room, which is the gateway, its primary presence is at the border between the mental and emotional homes and the spiritual home or spiritual consciousness, it's there at the border, finite meeting infinite. The intellect in this instance is basically like the bridge that connects the intelligence of the soul with the intelligence of the mind and emotion home. So how can we activate our intellect at all levels of our being? How can we draw upon it in all our intelligent thoughts? We can do this by what I said earlier, decluttering our intelligence. So today, most of us live in our mental and emotion homes alone. And both these homes are so intertwined that our emotions drive the mind and vice versa, causing chaos in our lives. We act out our emotions without thinking, or we tack on damaging emotions to our thoughts without reasoning. And these are all sources of chaos and clutter because we mix the mind, the mind and emotion homes and everything happens in there like a hodgepodge. Our mind was supposed to be the home of intelligent thought. And our emotions were supposed to complement these thoughts to produce rich experiences in our lives. Well, my dear friends, it's not working that way for us today, is it? I believe the best way to eliminate clutter is to consciously split the mind and emotion homes, separate them, and allow ourselves to flow from the mind home to the emotion home to the soul home. And that is where the intellect plays a key role, allowing us to flow from one to the other to the third. And this is how we create clarity and begin to access our intellect fully. So let us start by visualizing our three homes, okay? So home number one is the mind. Imagine this home as being like a theater, like one where we watch shows, for example. As you enter the theater, you see a beautiful fountain with softly glowing water flowing calmly from the fountain into a little canal that then goes all the way down the center of the theater to the stage. So you can imagine there's the fountain, it flows into a canal, little canal, very, very little. And that flows all the way to the center of the theater, to the stage, and then it goes back into the ground under the stage. The water goes under the ground at the stage. So this fountain and its glowing water are the intellect that is present in home one, the theater or mind. When this water goes back underground, 
It means that below the theater, the intellect exists as a large pool or, or reservoir or lake of glowing water. And the mind or home of the, the, the mind home or the theater resides on top of this lake. It sits on top of this lake. So that's grow, flowing underneath like groundwater flows. So the intellect is present everywhere in the mind, from below and above. Then the walls of the theater have paintings and posters of art. They have displays of all kinds of knowledge. There are also screens of data all over the theater walls, like the ones you see in the stock market. And there is a show constantly playing on the stage. So that's the home of the mind, home one, where there is art, there is science, there is data, there is knowledge, there are shows, and every material manifestation of knowledge present. They're all present in your mind. We are consciously aware of some knowledge and unaware of other knowledge. The better read and informed amongst us have more stored knowledge than others. Now take a moment, once again sit back, close your eyes, and let us look at the home of your mind. So once again, just breathe freely, be at complete peace, and let us look at the home of your mind. Look at the walls and the knowledge on the walls, either in the form of displays, posters, screens, there's knowledge all around on the walls of this theater. Now you look at the stage and there is a show being played out on the stage constantly. Look at the gently flowing, glowing water of the intellect from the fountain at the entrance as it flows into the channel that goes all the way down the middle of the theater to the stage. So look at the flow of this glowing fluid from the fountain to the channel to the stage, and then it goes, disappears below the stage. You have the most inspirational thoughts flowing in the fountain and its glowing water, which you can access by focusing on this water, focusing on its glow, because that's your intellect. So the home of your mind is fascinating, active, and vibrant. And the act on the stage is the acts of life playing out before you. So you are witnessing life on the stage. Take a moment and just look at home number one, the home of your mind from the walls, everything on the walls, to the flowing, glowing water, to the stage, to the constant show. That is your mind, home number one. You may open your eyes. So in this home, when you need to think, whenever you need to think or plan or get ideas, this is your intelligent home, the mind. Now be consciously aware of it as being with you all the time. Every time you need to think, step into it and take your time till you have reasoned out your thoughts and shaped them fully so that you can act on them or you can share them. Ask the glowing water of the intellect for inspirations for it's right there with you and come up with the best and most enlightened thoughts from here on. So this is home number one, the mind, exclusively for creating, processing and reasoning your thoughts. So start recognizing this home and start consciously going to it every time you need to think things through. Now this brings us 
to the second home, home number two, which is your emotion center. It must be kept separate from the home of the mind. So this home number two can sit side by side next to the mind, but it is separate. This home number two is like a small auditorium. And at the entrance, you also have the fountain of the intellect and its gl glowing water that flows into the channel that goes all the way down the center of the auditorium to the end where there is a raised platform on which there is a large orchestra playing. The glowing water of the intellect through the channel goes below the ground again, under the platform, just like home number one. So home number two also sits on the large glowing pool of water of the intellect, exactly like home number one. They're sitting above the same pool. Along the walls of the auditorium, you see musicians alongside the walls. You see the musicians sitting on their own too, composing their own music and practicing. It's all around the auditorium. There's musicians writing their music and practicing it. And then on the stage, there are musicians playing on the orchestra. So home number two, your emotion center, is an auditorium of music. And I use music as being synonymous to your emotions. And its walls have soft colors. And you can hear all kinds of music around you while the glowing water of the intellect flows below it and through it. So now let us close our eyes and take a tour through home number two our home of emotions. So take a few moments and visualize this auditorium. Visualize home number two. Look at the fountain of glowing water at the entrance. It's just flowing nicely, gently, overflowing from the fountain into the channel. Look at the channel and watch the flow, glowing water flow gently through the channel, down the auditorium, down its center, all the way to the platform. And then it disappears below the platform. On the platform, look at the musicians in the orchestra playing beautiful music. Look at the musicians that are sitting, the composers sitting along everywhere in the auditorium, writing their music, practicing their music. So look at all of them. And they are all there. There's the orchestra playing beautiful music. There's composers preparing the next music. There's composers and players training with their instruments to play that music. That's your auditorium. That's your home of emotions. The music is synonymous with your emotions. So take a moment and look at this auditorium for a few seconds. And you may now open your eyes. So here, my dear friends, every musician in the auditorium, whether on stage in the or whether on stage in the orchestra or seated alone, is an emotion of yours. Their music coincides with the type of emotion that they represent, such as happy, melancholy, angry, sad, fearful, elated, inspiring, creative or destructive. These are all the emotions in your emotion center. Now, whenever you need to deal with anything of an emotional nature, 
Don't take it to home number one. Take it to home number two. Process your emotions in your auditorium separately with patience and calmness and feel each one of them and understand what they are trying to tell you and take your time as you process your emotion. That's the best thing to do. Then look at the glowing water of the intellect in home number two and draw inspirations that will help you shape your emotions in the best way possible. So keep the mind and the emotions separate. When it comes to processing your thoughts and emotions, keep them separate. And this is a great way to bring down the clutter with the mind being the home of thought and the emotions being in the home of emotions. This will make for clear and enriching experiences in your life because neither one is clouding the other. It is absolutely liberating. So practice it consciously. Keep going to these different, different homes and doing what they are there for you to do. What happens? The cloudiness goes away. The thoughts become clear. The emotions portray the correct message. You begin to function now. You begin to function with clarity. Then there is home number three, which is your spiritual home your final home. And this home, and we have done, we have, we have visited this home several times when we have done practical meditations, but this home is like a cave in the desert whose roof is open to the universes. And you are sitting there in a dark, brightly lit moonlight, and the light is coming through and illuminating its walls, its floor, there's a soft, loving light that emanates from the walls, the floor, and the roof, and all parts of its atmosphere in this cave. The cave is very, very peaceful. It is completely still. No movement at all. It is totally silent. And it is timeless, because even your watch does not take in this cave, your spiritual home. So take a moment and let us visualize home number three. So close your eyes once again. Settle in and look at the key, look at the cave. You are seated on the floor, leaning against its walls. Look at the soft light that emanates from everywhere, from the floor, roof, coming in from outside, above the roof, from the atmosphere. Look at this soft light that emanates everywhere. Connect with the stillness of this cave because everything is absolutely still. Even a feather lying on its floor does not move. It is absolutely silent, so connect with its silence. There is zero sound. And when you look up through the large opening of its roof, you see the light of the skies. You see the light of the moon, the stars, the universes, which are endless. And as you look through this, this opening in the roof, and as you focus on these universes, look closely at all these bodies floating out there. And you realize that you are a part of every particle out there. That all these universes are actually present as an extension of this cave itself. So take a few moments and experience home number three. You may open your eyes. It's always difficult to leave home number three, I find, because I don't want to leave it. But 
when you go to home number three, you can get there in your meditation and prayers each day. You can also get there when you need the peace and light and guidance during your day because it is your home of pure tranquility. Your intellect and its glowing waters emerge from here, from your spiritual home, and then they flow into the fountains in homes one and two. So each time that you look at the glowing waters of the intellect in your mind and emotions, recognize that they are coming from your soul, your spiritual consciousness, your spiritual home. And the more you focus on these glowing waters in your conscious daily life, the closer you will be linked to your spiritual home, which is home number three. You will find yourself flowing into your spiritual home far more than ever before because now you've opened yourself with that connection and it is there, present, all the time. But now you get to go and flow into it without any struggle. So these are your three homes, my dear friends. And to conclude, therefore, I would like to say that your intellect is present in every element of your being. So that's the first premise that you must make yourself consciously aware of its presence all the time. And you do this in home number one, your mind, where you go each time you need to think, reason, and process your thoughts. And while you're there, look at the glowing water of your intellect and let it inspire your mind. Then, when you have to deal with anything of an emotional nature, go into home number two and experience the pro and process your emotions there in home number two, and it may take time. Your intellect is also flowing there, so draw inspirations from it for your emotions. And finally, take the time to be in home number three as often as you can in your day through prayer, meditation, and flowing with your intellect as you travel within and between your mind and emotions. So it's become constant. In a brief nutshell, my dear friends, this is how we access our intellect. And remember, do not take emotions to your mind, keep them separate. Do not process your thoughts in your emotions. That's a very bad idea. Give each one their own space, the theater of thought and the musical auditorium of emotions. And of course, home three is your ultimate abode. If we can start thinking and living this way, we may find ourselves living at much higher and inspired intelligence levels, higher than we have been able to achieve thus far in our lives. And it's not difficult and it's not a struggle. It simply has to be practiced. And the, the best part is that as we do this, we can bask in the peace and happiness that comes from being decluttered. A lot of clarity. So with that, I'd like to conclude today's insight. We have a few things to think about, and I will try and get uh, either an audio or video of today's insight so you can go back and practice and try and capture the, the path to accessing your intellect.